Hey guys, welcome to another episode. So uh, today we're taking a look at a really simple yet very effective way to properly present your validation checks as part of your Excel modeling or financial statements or whatever. Uh, basically the idea is that it's always good to have some validation. And I'm gonna show you a few basic ways to, to add validation to your model and uh, we're also gonna look at how to make it like really visually pleasing. Let's get to it. So here we have our forecast financials for Acme Limited for uh, this year and the next four years. So for this year it's a budget and a forecast for the next four. And uh, it's a model containing uh, our income statement, our balance sheet and our cash flow statement. And uh, usually those models tend to get pretty cluttered, especially for uh, users that are not part of uh, the preparation or just looking at the model. So it's a good idea to add some validation checks um, at the top to make sure that everything reconciles properly and uh, everything in the model is working correctly. Usually add this at the top. I'm just gonna copy my header and call this zero validation checks so this is going to be our first validation check assets equal equity plus liabilities our second one is going to be cash balance actually cash in balance sheet equals cash in cash flow statement and our third one is going to be retained earnings reconciliation to income statement I'm gonna summarize those as uh, a total of a sorts and uh, my idea is to present my total here validation so here I wanted to say if the model is valid for this year okay so what kind of validations uh, we can do we can do all kinds of validation validations uh, in early stages of our model we can start setting up validations that would look into our working files and compare breakdowns to the to the data presented in the final model but here in just presenting this summary just looking at some basic things so here what we want to see is or we can see that we have our check here as well we can just say if our check equals zero, then give me one, otherwise give me zero. So one being that the validation uh, is a pass and uh, zero being that there's some kind of an issue. Okay, copy that with control R to the right. And uh, next one, cash in balance sheet equals cash in cash flow statement. Okay, the way I'm going to set up this is I'm going to round them. If round, cash and cash equivalents rounded to zero equals round my cash and cash equivalents at the end of the period, rounded to zero num digits after the decimal point, then give me one, otherwise give me zero. Okay, this one is fine as well. Copy it to the right. And next one, retain earnings reconciliation to income statement. We cannot actually do for, for our first period because we're going to use the change in retained turning. So we need the prior period. So I'm just going to hard code one here and uh, just say that this is hard coded, hard coded as no prior year data is available. Okay. And here we're going to check if I'm going to round everything, if round, and what we're going to be rounding is retained earnings at the end of the period minus retained earnings at the beginning of the period. I'm going to round that to zero. And we're going to see if it equals our profit loss before income tax. Give me one, otherwise give me zero. And to get to zero. What's the problem here? What could have happened that would make the deviation between uh, retained earnings not being equal to profit or loss before income tax? And uh, the answer is uh, dividends. So maybe we paid some dividends and uh, yep, dividends paid. We definitely did pay some dividends. So we need to add those back 
here and since they're with a negative down there we're just gonna add a negative sign and select our dividend paid and we still get a zero and I can see that I haven't rounded my retained earnings so maybe that's the issue and yeah that was the issue you see there was probably a couple of cents or half a euro that was off and uh, that's that's not an issue actually those models would usually be presented in thousands and even then you would round to the nearest thousand okay let's copy that over and here we see that in 2022 our forecast shows that there's some issue with our retained earnings reconciliation so we already included our dividends and uh, what else could it be? If we look through the data, you would notice that our reserves changed. So we actually transferred retained earnings to reserves. And by the look of it, it's about 30 million. So it's a good idea to add the change in reserves as well to our formula. So here, after the dividends, we're gonna add the closing balance of reserves and we're gonna subtract the opening balance and this should clear our error and it's really important here to remember to copy that over to our other periods because you never know when we might update something in our model and then my total validation check would be just a simple check if the sum of those three equals three then everything's fine otherwise i have some issue Okay, copy that to the side and everything's perfect. So one thing we can do is um, we can go here and type in some formula that says that if this equals one, then give me okay, or otherwise give me issue. And that's perfectly fine. We can use some conditional formatting to color those, uh, make them like bad or good. But the thing is that I always wanted like a more visual representation. And even here, I, I don't like the way this looks. Uh, you can use the same approach here, but I just don't like it. I want it to be like more visual, especially considering the fact that we're presenting this to people that are usually not used to going deep into numbers. So they might be much more uh, appealed towards uh, something more visual. So what I figured out is, let's say I select this thing and to use conditional formatting, we can use an icon set. And at first it's just a green icon before the one. And I don't like that very much. So let's just go ahead and manage the rule. What I want to do is I want to show the icon only. I don't want the number. Also, I don't want it to be based on numbers. I want it to be, uh, to be based on percentages. I want it to be based on numbers. And if it's one, it's going to be green. And if it's zero, I want it to be red. And that should be it. Yep. Nice looking icons. Let's just use our format painter to copy this to the bottom. And uh, this one that we manually inputted usually highlight that in like a light gray just so it'll be noticeable that there's a comment and uh, the other thing uh, that i'm looking at right now is that you cannot actually tell that those are like a, a summary of the ones above so let's just select them do conditional formatting manage rules just for this selection edit rule and let's just change those icons to those nice ones with the check box the check mark and the and the white cross. Apply. Okay, much, much better. And what we can do actually is we can just copy this formatting and paste it over here and just change this formula. Instead of checking anything, we can just make it equal to this. Copy to the right, and now we have really nice looking validation up top. So, what happens if, let's say, Somebody did something to the model and ended up deleting our property, plant and equipment. Imagine that this is a huge model, so we're somewhere around it and ready to, to present it. 
and we didn't notice that. But what we notice is this red icon up here and uh, it's gonna make us look through our model, come to our validation checks and as soon as we pinpointed the period from here, we're gonna use this uh, here to pinpoint exactly what's wrong. So assets equals equity plus liabilities is not okay. So we know that we have to go to the balance sheet and look through there and we're gonna see that property plant and equipment is missing. All right, so it's a pretty straightforward concept. I just wanted to share it with you. Uh, I personally think that anytime you present a model or uh, give uh, a completed model to a client, you should put in some effort to make it look nice, visually appealing, because uh, it turns out that this is really, really important for people with the way things look and the way things are presented. So that's why I went ahead and uh, started doing my validations in this manner. And I gotta say that um, I've gotten quite a lot of praise about that because it's so simple and yet so few people know about it that it's really impressive to somebody that's not like really into uh, Excel modeling and Excel functionality as a whole. Okay, that was it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. It's, uh, you notice that I'm not down there talking through the whole time. I'm just trying this approach as I'm preparing my um, financial modeling and actually budget modeling course uh, for Udemy, so look out for this one. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and maybe even punch that bell icon to receive notifications every time I upload a new video. Till then, thanks for watching and see you next one.